Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the Support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So now let's talk about the regulation of cholesterol synthesis. We mentioned before what the committed and rate-limiting step of cholesterol synthesis was, and that was the step that was catalyzed by HMG-CoA reductase. And we said that it was highly regulated because it was both com the committed step as well as the rate-limiting step. So it's highly regulated. And there are many different ways to regulate its activity as well as its availability. So we'll talk about what that means in just a second. So here is the step catalyzed by HMG-CoA reductase, taking HMG-CoA and reducing it to mevalonate, which is of course the molecule that was committed to cholesterol synthesis. So I want you to consider this here. So in the DNA, we would have the gene for the HMG-CoA reductase enzyme, right, because it's a protein, right? So we would have a gene for it, okay? And this gene for the HMG-CoA reductase can be transcribed into an mRNA transcript, and that transcript can, of course, be translated into the protein that is the actual functional enzyme, okay? Now, that protein, of course, can be degraded via proteolysis to give just a bunch of free amino acids. Okay. Now, this enzyme here can do its thing, right? That's, that's what we're really talking about when we're talking about this thing being able to catalyze the reaction that we just mentioned. Now, this enzyme can be covalently modified okay, via phosphorylation to give the HMG-CoA reductase enzyme with a phosphate group on it. Now, all these different things contribute to what's going on with this enzyme. Now, aside from this part, this arrow going downwards here, these first three arrows up here, what is that called? That's called the central dogma. And those, those arrows basically determine whether or not this protein is even around, right? It has to be transcribed and translated to even make the protein. And it has to, and it can be proteolized, so, um, whether or not it's even available is dependent upon these first three up here, okay? These first three situations. How much of this gene is being transcribed, how much of it is being translated, and, and whether or not it's being proteolized, or how often or how much. And so these three things determine whether or not the protein is even available, right? Because if it's proteolized, the, it's just a bunch of amino acids, and how quickly and how often it's transcribed and translated to give us this protein is important as well. Now, once we actually have this protein, um, it can be co covalently modified right, by, by phosphorylation, um, and that can alter the activity of the enzyme. Okay, So you notice these LTs and this ST here. The LTs stand for long-term, and ST stands for short-term. So long-term regulation is going to focus on these three things, transcription of the gene, translation of the mRNA transcript, and proteolysis of the, the enzyme itself whereas covalent modification occurs very short term, uh, phosphorylation and dephosphorylation can happen in an instant. So that's a short term um, way of controlling the uh, activity of this enzyme, whereas these three are all ways of controlling whether or not that, that protein is even around. Okay? So I hope that intro was helpful in kind of seeing this uh, from a, an overview perspective. See you in the next videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.